As a resident of Pennsylvania, you should be proud of the state. The state's never lost population. It's in the Northeast Corridor. It's got an economic climate that's vibrant. It's got a world-class city in Philadelphia. It's got an innovative city in Pittsburgh. It's got South Central region on the Maryland border. But then you have the Pennsylvania of historical proportions. As a citizen, if your main contact in Pennsylvania is with your local government, then you have a, a different story to tell. Because the story of local government in Pennsylvania is one of differences across regions, across economic spectrums. And it's a mixed story, but it's local government. To the outside world, Pennsylvania is a strong state. If you're trying to keep local government services afloat in Pennsylvania, that's an issue. So we're definitely a Rust Belt city, and I think the, the clock is ticking. I mean, currently, we're right now, again, the poorest city in the state. There are a number of dark spots that are hitting the city, you know, from drug problems and crime that are starting to grow. At the same time, though, there are, are a bunch of bright spots that are actually happening here. There's some wonderful technology and startup activity and entrepreneurship, and there are a number of growing businesses. So the question is, are they in balance with one another? I don't know. Many of these cities in the Rust Belt are their main economic engine as to why the cities actually came to be or, or thrived in the first place. A lot of these industries have died off, which actually resulted in massive decline within the cities. There's a lot of kind of scratching of what can we do now to try to get back to our heyday and those kind of things, which should be done, obviously. These are people's homes and people's cities and where people interact, people grew up, people have their families. You know, these things need to be done. I think that there is something that's rising out of the ashes here of yesteryear. The question is, will it rise higher than the fire? I think it's a crisis in the Johnstown area. Most of the kids are not being served and just a few are being lifted up and allowed to be successful. And then we end up spending two, three, five times as much on the back end in terms of taking care of, of dysfunction and disrepair and lives that have fallen apart.
But the city of Johnstown has taken a different approach to the project, requiring homeowners to pressure test their existing pipes before connecting to see if they can handle the flow. It's a method not required by the DEP and one that contractors admit is sure to fail and that's why homeowners are really putting up a fight. The people are protesting about the sewer because it personally affects them. Unless there's a personal motivation, no one cares. And if you're gonna ask that question of me, my personal motivation is I'm tired of the corruption. I have a family history where I have a relative who was murdered 91 years ago. I'm not saying who did it, because I really don't know. But someone did. And I'm drawn for the injustice against people who may or may not have been involved in my family 91 years ago. So there's a lot of blood. A lot of history. A lot of history. Oh yeah, a lot of history. I came down here, I can say the late 80s. And then I came back here like in like 93, 94. Even in the 90s, even in the 80s, this city was like vibrant. You could, it was more here. I mean, I'm like, whoa, I would like to come down here. Even the water tastes good. No plan. I even bottled a couple of bottles of water and I tuck it up and I had my wife to taste it. That was the good thing about Johnstown that I, I took back with me up to Jersey and that made me want to come down here even more. I came down here in 08, and I was like, what the hell happened? I was kind of lost, but anyway. Should I start it off? We're on our first registration meeting of 2015 for TaylorMade Basketball League here in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. This is our first day for its registration. You can see no one showed up yet. We recognize that some of those kids that got killed was a part of what I was doing as far as the basketball programs that we did here in Johnstown. A lot of those kids didn't really grasp a hold what we were doing. Maybe they'll still be here. My prayers go out to the families and to them too. Just a week ago, we just had a death. A young man died, 17 years old, uh, Micaiah. He was my son's best friend. Um, he died of a very a violent death as far as getting shot three times. He was still alive when they shot him, so. And that really touched home to me, my son, my wife, pretty much the whole community. My registration here in Johnstown is pretty as for the low income people. Last year I did the basketball registration, it was only 15 bucks. Can't really go to the YMCA anymore because they always have it booked out and there's a lot of courts that people don't really use around the area, and they took use of them. Without him, no one else would be doing it. We wouldn't have the leagues to play in. People would be doing other stuff that they shouldn't be doing instead of you know coming out having fun playing basketball. We don't get paid for this. You know, it's something that we love to do. It's open for anyone. I mean, I feel good because you're here. Coach James is here. I feel that it's slow and it's gonna pick up. We got about four weeks, really. I was here in 2006, but I'd say about 2008, 2009 is when I really got acclimated to the community and started going like to football games and stuff like that. The football team was doing very well during that time. It used to be packed. It used to be packed. And I saw over the years, it dwindled to the only ones there, a few parents, the cheerleaders, younger kids maybe walking around, they're not really watching the game. But when I first came, it used to be packed, packed. It's surprising because by this not being a big city, I would think that people would gravitate more to being at those type of things because there are not a lot of other alternatives. Like if you're not at the football game, where are you? In the last 10 years, we have gone from a poverty level in the city of 24% to a poverty level of above 32%. And it's exactly the opposite of the stated purpose of public housing. You're not supposed to do that. We have another problem, is that in the past, public housing always had somebody that was actually living in the community that was the eyes and ears for the authority around the clock. There's no one living in those places anymore. They go to work in the morning and they leave at five. And when you do that, you're not protecting the people that are in public housing, they have a right to be secure. Well, let's talk about that because of a population of 20,000 people in the city of Johnstown, 35% live below the poverty line. So there's 7,000 people. That's the numbers. It's plain and simple. 7,000 people. 
we're only dealing with 3,500 of them. Okay, I think it's 3,456. So there's another 3,500 out there somewhere in the city that they're not under our housing or our umbrella of public housing and Section 8. So they're out there somewhere and they need help too. So who's helping them? Drug-related problems occur all across the board. It is an issue. When I first started here in 2000, we had far less than one penetrating trauma case per month. Uh, we probably had a, a handful a year. And the majority of those were self-inflicted, you know, suicide attempts. It was rare that we saw domestic altercations with gunshot wounds or stabbings. We saw them, but, but not all that often. Lately, we're seeing several a month. Uh, so it's really increased considerably, probably at least 500%. When I talk to my friends in Clearfield County, they watch the Johnstown television station. And it's almost like a joke. They tell me, what is going on there? They were watching television every night. It's drug bust. It's Killings, shootings, fires, I mean, all kinds of crime. Like, my people in Bedford and Clearfield are watching some kind of comedy routine, but it's real. Some of the people that live in housing, which is lower income, they come from different areas as far as Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York, Pittsburgh, and where they was living at in those cities, you know, they tear up there. So I guess they try to bring it here. Hopefully I'll have at least five teams this year. Um, if not, we're open for more teams to come in. Um, even if I have to push the um, starting date back, uh, we're going to get this party started. My week don't end until Friday for me running around. That's the only time I get rest, it's Friday, maybe sometimes Saturdays. I met Eddie Taylor. I was at a game one day, and he was like, you know what, we should do basketball. Well, I said, I can coach basketball because that's my sport. He said, let's do it. So I actually went home to Chicago for Christmas, and I was gone for about two weeks. And when I came back, he was like, I've been looking all over for you. He had actually put together a team and actually set them up in the Y League. I came in, I started trying to help him, but the problem was we didn't have anywhere to practice. So we would try to conduct practices. Aerobics class was going on in one half of the gym and other people just playing basketball on the other rims. We would have one rim, and the rest of the basketball would just be going on, and this was with third and fourth graders whose attention span is already low. I'm a diehard basketball person, so I wanted to really coach versus kind of just doing something. If he hadn't started that basketball, we never would have had basketball here, as far as I'm concerned, because I was here a while and it wasn't going on. My phone number is right here. If you can't get in touch with me, you know, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. you can even contact him. All He's right. one of the uh, representatives. Right. Real Thank talk. All right, yeah, no doubt, man. Yeah, everybody want to try to shoot each other, kill each other, they sell drugs. This is the only thing keeping everybody positive, sports. I From basketball you. to football, and this is the man for everything. He can come, definitely. We'll do the same camp like we did last year, three weeks of camp, the same way he's going to be training, getting ready. So I left behind a construction business in, in Eastern Pennsylvania, and that was still my passion, but always looking at the potential of real estate, uh, looking at architecture and, you know, taking in some of these things and wondering, okay, why haven't these been saved? Why hasn't anybody uh, adopted any of these buildings? And even the ones that are, that are occupied, there's a sort of slumlord mentality across commercial and residential properties. And it's, you know, agonizing to watch that on a residential side. Oh, I, th I think it's very much where you stand is where you sit. If you're in a prosperous suburban area in the collar counties around Philadelphia, you probably uh, live in one of the richest areas of, of the United States. When you go to the historical parts of the state, the older boroughs that were built along avenues of commerce, that were built on river banks and railroad station terminals, those areas, because of their age, because of the type of infrastructure they have, the population demographics, they have a different story to tell. So, you know, in local government, how you see your local government, what services you're thinking you should be getting, really depends a lot on your history. And Pennsylvania's history has been, has been changed in the last 200 years. Thank you. Um, I want to give you one more paper. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And that's what we are doing here in Johnstown. It's a stop the violence movement also. We just need some, some, some type of support from the community to help out with that. Okay. Okay, thanks. We don't want to be another Chicago or New York. 
So we want to keep the people and let them know it's something out here that we do care about our city and the people that's of the city. Right through here. Watch how we come out in front of a little cut through. So I try to get away from the white. They got uh, quite a few speakers, town officials, uh, members of churches that's going to be speaking here in Johnstown on uh, stop the violence here in Johnstown. More like a peace. We need peace here in Johnstown. I've never felt that Johnstown is a Rust Belt region. Um, I've always been uncomfortable with that term. An individual has a, a, a respect, a, a, a feeling, a heartfelt desire to live somewhere, not because it has a mountain there. Maybe the scenery's pretty, but it's really heart deals with people. And so it's always the people. And so when people talk about Rust Belt, well, I see that as an attitude. And I don't see people here thinking about themselves as Rust Belt. Never have. Showmen look good. I'm a broke guy, so my showmanship don't look so good. Give me a couple million or a couple of thousand, I can show you, I'll give you a show. You know, this isn't an issue of let's see how many cars we can burn in our streets. This is an issue of coming out and having community involvement and helping each other. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for coming out tonight. People love to be riled up. Ah, oh, yeah, people love that. That's why they like sports. That's why people do, they love the thrill. But when the thrill is over, and there's no revolution, no nothing changing, then what's the point of having given a throw and a speech for? Our next speaker is our own district attorney, Kelly Cabot. You know, I've said we cannot arrest our way out of this problem. And the community response has been incredible. And I can't say enough. Great things are happening in this city every single day. If anybody knows that, I know that. And I hope you recognize that. But in order for peace to reign supreme in this valley, we have to resolve the conflict behaviors, i.e. the drugs, the gun, the killing, between the social groups within our community that have opened the gates for such behaviors to become so prevalent. The politicians is far out of touch with the town than it ever was. They ain't never seen it hard. They ain't never seen stuff before like this. It's all new to them. We gotta give it to them. It's a definitive and literal thing. If we don't do better as a community, young and old, female, male, black, white, we include everybody. Diversity in thought, diversity in skill, diversity in creativity. Here's what our community looks like moving forward. It's dead. We will rise from the ashes. We will come back with an industry. That's going to be phenomenal. It's going to start here. We have a job to do. My one directive for you tonight, love your neighbor as yourself. A lot of people came here tonight. Um, I guess everybody is feeling the vibe. We're going, to, we're going to hop on one of these school buses and get out of here. Come on. One of the things that we do as researchers, but also in terms of thinking about strategically and politically, is, is really looking at a community and figuring out who do people look to as the leaders, whether it be because they politically get elected or they've done things for the community that people respect or they have money or they've just been around forever. Wh whatever that makes them have clout or power, identifying who those are and who really would need to be at the table 
people for something to be legitimate. The unanimous vote to appoint Gunby to a five-year, $85,000 salary position appeared simple on Wednesday, but the decision has taken council months, endless executive sessions, and more than two dozen applicants from across the country. I think we're one, one step ahead of the game right now by having somebody local come into that position, which he's been basically doing for the last six to eight months. Remarkable job. When's the last time everybody agreed like this on something? Uh, to my knowledge, I, hey, boy, I have no idea to my knowledge. I've continued to advocate for all these rights. I went to a city council meeting and I met a man named Joe Taranto. Joe was on council. He was the only council member that was open enough to support a hate crimes bill and non-discrimination legislation. But Joe's big problem was he was stepping down from council that December. When I got on the council for the brief time I was on, because I was only going to be on for a short period of time, I wanted to do a lot of things. So I, I picked out things that were easy to accomplish in a short period of time. Do you think about running again? Uh, initially, even in the paper, I was quoted that I, when I first got appointed to it, I wasn't looking to run again. I just thought, well, I could do this and help out. And I wasn't interested in politics. After seeing what happens there, I then thought it was something that should be done. Not so much as running to get elected, but to expose what's going on. I'm very interested in today hearing what you would like to see Johnstown become. I think many times as adults we make decisions assuming this will be what you want, but we need to hear today really what you want and what you need. It's going to keep you in Johnstown, it's going to keep you active, it's going to keep you out of trouble. I think the key to making Johnstown better is having a plan, ambition, and realism. Know what can be done and try hard. To make it happen. Wouldn't anybody say that the drug problem, especially through your eyes, <laughs> is minor? By a show of hands that it is a major problem? For about 25 years, I had a struggle with alcoholism. As a result, I came to a a residential treatment center here in Johnstown called Pinal. It was a 13-month program and I dealt with an alcohol problem. I've been sober now for 11 years without any relapses. There's an organization called New Day that's here in Johnstown. I started coaching there. They were very supportive. But just having good friends and positive people in your life is an important part of being in recovery. A lot of these ball players, they're young. This is street basketball. They go out to the clubs at night. Saturday morning, you know they're not getting up. You know, If they get up, believe me, it must be a fire somewhere. This court right here, we probably have to get the net. I know I got to put a net up. Yes, you probably playing right in the YMCA league with me. Um, well, you got, we're we gonna play the big kids too because I have the six and six right so. Yeah, cause, Step up a little bit more. Cause see you didn't. There you go. I need to do something right, especially by these kids. And I know something is out of place and you know it's out of place. And your job is to put it back in place. Well, this is what we, this is gonna be happening. I, was gonna, I brought these up to get one to you too, like. Okay. We need something to do. Instead of being out here, you know what I mean, acting crazy, fighting each other and talking about each other. 
Uh, we don't need that. But a lot of them, like, I understand they work, you know, got things to do. But I'm saying the guys ain't got nothing to do. Come on out of here. So who picking the team you is? Nah, he's his own coach. No, no, coach. I know so. I just moved out here and shit, so this shit new to me and shit. You I'm just letting you know. I just moved Where out you here. From? I'm from Jersey. Huh? You already know this. You you already right, get left. So I don't got, I don't got, I don't got 35 right now, though. No. I don't get paid for this. I don't get perks, junkets, contracts, all the crap that the other people get. I do this out of my own pocket and with because I want to see change. You mean am I upset that I got hit with the proclamation scandal and called a stripper and giving booze to children? No, I don't care about that. I laugh about it. When they hit me as a pedophile on the paper, I, I laughed at that too. I have no criminal record, people. And honestly, if you're gonna get involved in this kind of stuff, expect to be trashed with everything they have because that's how they dissuade people. So much resistance for simple things that I don't know how anybody would argue against. And every single thing I brought up was fought tooth and nail by just about everybody. These people are actively fighting progress that would push the city forward. And the reasoning, I can only guess that because they can't connect themselves to it and profit from it. When I initially met Joe, Joe was trashed by the school block. They came after me because I was Joe's friend. So of course, my response is if you're gonna come after me, you better make sure you go for the jugular because I'm never gonna stop. I'm like a rabbit with his teeth cut and something I'm gonna continue. I think it's the steel mill mentality, I guess you might wanna call it, where we got jobs at the mill and if I don't follow what's going on at the steel mill, I lose my job and there's no other game in town. So shut your mouth and go along. The weather is way better than last week, I'll tell you that. Like last year, it was easy for us to do it because it was a handout, it was a given. A lot of these basketball players, they're looking for a handout. I'm not trying to give you a handout. I had the registration of flyers out for two months, three months now. So, you know, I can't just grab their hands and bring them to play. All I can do is put it out there, and that's it. They need to get here to register because right now, uh, time is running out. Tom is running out on those guys. Yellow tape surrounds a courtyard in a Johnstone housing complex today as detectives are trying to figure out exactly what led to an early morning shooting in Prospect. Neighbors telling us they are fed up with the violence and they question if the Johnstown Housing Authority is doing enough to stop crime. We do have people from outside the city of Johnstown and outside the county of Cambria. There's no question about that. We want to talk about the crime rates. I can go into the crime rates. Based upon the records that we received from the Johnstown Police Department, we represent 8% of the crime in the city of Johnstown. And uh, to me, uh, there's another 92% that um, people need to start looking over. I believe our cameras have been very instrumental in a lot of the uh, criminal activities or bigger criminal activities that have taken place in our communities. Security cameras aren't the same as living someplace and participating in that, in that neighborhood. The housing in communities like Prospect and Solomon Run, Oakhurst, you're not in that community. So if somebody has a problem at six o'clock, you're gonna wait till nine o'clock the next morning. Would you say generally things have been getting better or worse? I'll tell you, this, I, I think it's getting worse. You think so? Yeah. This was the scene Wednesday night just after eight as investigators respond to Solomon Holmes for a homicide. They say it happened outside of building number four and as the sun rose Thursday, Johnstown is ending the year with a homicide, putting the city's homicide total at six. Now it's kind of a shocker actually. I mean, granted you hear shootings and everything like that, but you just kind of I hope it's not anyone you know or anything like that. We have records here on file of every report we've ever received from the Johnstown Police Department.
far as the basketball league, sad to say we're not going to have it this year. What I did this year, I put all my eggs in one basket and hopefully they'd hatch. And none of them hatch, so I can't do nothing. I, I didn't lose anything because I didn't put nothing in it but my time. And that what made me so upset. Some people was telling me that a lot of those guys got locked up. But what I don't know, could have been drug charges, could have been fines that they owe, you know, but they're not here. You know, like Prospect, their whole team got locked up. You know, except two players. I'm like, wow, for real? You know, I can't want it by myself, you know. The whole city of Johnstown, as far as the urban areas, the guys like, you know, myself have to want it also. How do we get everybody to kind of turn and look at a shared problem and make that a priority in a time of scarcity and unemployment? And that's where leadership matters. And so that's the idea of how do we create a focus and who has the power and the clout and the willingness to do that in places like Johnstown. And since I've moved back, you know, I've spent a lot of time uh, trying to find out what people think the problem is. Making sure that we're solving the right problem is critically important, and economic development isn't necessarily the problem. It's a problem of vitality. There are things that we do here that are important to the world, and so how do we do more of them? And I think that generally people recognize that we need to do something. The question is, what is that thing? How do we focus our efforts on some singular things that are wins for us? Cheers and applause followed the unanimous vote at Wednesday's special city council meeting to appoint a new city manager. A surprise, but at the same time, it's something that I had, had not originally planned on, uh, but sometimes things happen that you don't plan on. And everything that you have said, all the experts that we tend to pay a lot of money to come tell us that this is what you should do, same exact thing that they're saying. We need to continue to not allow ourselves to do nothing because doing nothing has done nothing but get us in the situation that we are in. You know, the mentality among any young person that I talk to is, I've got to get out of here. Whether it's uh, you know, to pursue education or just to pursue a better life in general. There are some opportunities that exist here, but we don't do anything to, to show people that, to help folks connect with that. It's kind of that attitude that, well, we've given up on this area. Opportunities lie elsewhere. Job opportunity in Johnstown sucks. Johnstown don't have nothing here. So they, black on white is black on black crimes. This town really gives you a dead end. And this is an important quote. Now, I, I got this out of one of the um, uh, consolidated plans. Since poverty is a function of income, its effects on housing opportunity is apparent. Think about it. Yeah, I'm getting out of this. I wouldn't say no, but I'm getting out of here to a better apartment. This is my life. I'm trying to get out of here. He's a good landlord, not to kick him down, but he's not good for me, though, put it that way. I tried him for seven years. Where I used to live at, the apartment was pretty nice. Paying two sewage bills, uh, Dell and Johnstown, and I was paying two taxes, school taxes. Come here. I'll get you on film, man. I finally got to get off this house. I need a yard, man. He got his brother living with him, so it's not too much of privacy. They're in the same room, so some pictures from last year. The Giants, I don't have the Steelers on, on deck right now. Uh, the other coaches have those guys. We all got these. It was just something to give out to the coaches, and some of the parents got some, too. This how I live. Not in here, but this is a part of my living room. It used to be better than this. This is only a two bedroom, so we, we found something a little bigger. This was some of my son's art. My oldest son, some of his art. When he was in school, a lot of my artwork was in storage. I did a lot of draft, like, as far as drawing buildings and stuff like that. Outside is warm in here, inside. That's how cold it gets, really. So I told him that um, we're not going to see another one turn here at all. In Johnstown, we don't have enough people. People are, I guess, overworked, underpaid, tired, don't have time, whatever the reason is. 
later down the line when things go bad, it's kind of too late. These poor people, number one, they have no job to go to. They may be making more money staying home than they would be going to work. But we have to, we have to change that. The black people that I know and the poor people that I know in Johnstown would still rather work and break even because they have self-respect. They feel like they're working toward a goal. Like that old saying, we don't want a hand up, we want a hand up. Have we been able to turn with the changing times? What is required to turn? You've got to move now. You can't sit back and say, well, I hope this happens. Because of things like poverty and, and drug issues and housing, uh, we really need to be thoughtful about our community design so that uh, we can impact in positive ways the moving of that floor. If we do those two things together, we can have a remarkable outcome. But it's a long tail. Like some of these things could have been started. And not that no one's doing them, it's just the cooperation model for our organizations could be more thoughtfully designed. We've got to change that, or we'll continue to be, you know, a community of a transient employees, transient talent. There's a tree down here that's grown out of a big rock. That's how the mentoring started, here. And that tree reminded me of me and my past. The tree was born in a lousy neighborhood, had no help. It was self-reliance. You're born with a big boulder on your back, and now how do you get up to the top? You go this way and you go that way, you grab onto this and you grab onto that, and eventually you hit a lot of dead ends, you fail a lot and then eventually you get on top. So when we started bringing the kids up, I related that story to them. So I wanted to go through the woods and find another wow moment. So then all of a sudden, when we got the greatest minds of all times, and we put them in the middle of the woods and we got heads of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, I'm walking through the woods and I'm going like, Steve, are you nuts? I had it in my mind to do something positive here in Johnstown for the kids. Last year, we started the NFL Play 60 with two teams. And the reason why we did that, at that time, wasn't no flag football league here in Johnstown for four years. Flag football is needed here. Simple. When he finds out something, he's the type of person that wants to get it going, and he's not doing it for selfish reasons. He did the same thing with basketball. Like, why they ain't got no basketball here? Because he comes from a community where there was a lot more going on. You know, being a coach myself and having teams throughout all the years I have been coaching, a lot of these guys here in Johnstown, I don't know. I just put it out there and see if they wanted to coach, and um, we conversated. It's up to the coaches, really, you know, whether they wanted to take on volunteer. You know, a lot of them, as far as when you commit to something, it's a commitment. And a lot of them don't hold up to their commitments. I think every week we should have a meeting during the season. Because that way we can iron out what we're wrong. And it might be throwing some little favoritism there. Right, right, right. And of course, you're going to have some parents that's going to call you all the time. You know, but the parents definitely need to be active. You know, after school activities that uh, encourage the mind, that encourage creativity, music programs, athletics, things like that, I think really are helpful to try to keep kids uh, away from drugs. Boredom's a very bad thing. Uh, when kids are bored, when adults are bored, uh, they'll tend to take more risky choices. Uh, they'll tend to do things to try to alleviate the boredom. Uh, they'll drink, they'll smoke, they'll, they'll do drugs. Being here, it's different, it's different, but the community is amazing depending on which community you decide to run with. If, um, if you decide to run with um, a certain group of people that really aren't beneficial, then it's a bad community. But if you decide to run with a certain group of people who love the Lord and are striving to make a change in the community, it's a great place to be. 
we can keep our kids active, if we can keep them involved in activities, if we can expose them to other kids who are clean and wholesome and, and, and trying to make something of themselves and expose them to adults who can help guide them, help them make the right choices and who can lead by example, I think that's probably the best that we can do for our kids. We have 21,000 people. Do we need 50,000 to make it better? And why can't we make it better with the 21,000 that we have here? My dad says that Johnstown used to be a very good place and then when the steel mill shut down, that's when things got worse with the drug deal. I would actually like to see Johnstown become a very popular city, <clears throat> something like Hollywood. All we need is just something big like when the steel mills are running, like we could just like replace that with like technology industry, seeing how the 21st century is about technology and trust me, we can actually do that. I think that a lot of people look at the downtown here and look, it was it was on a trajectory for improvement. We've read more recent news about, you know, developments uh, that, that were planned, large scale developments, and one piece cropped up and they weren't sustained. They didn't go out and try and find the next piece and the next piece. And that's what it takes in the scenario we're in. It takes local government and local developers out in pursuit of those other uh, relationships, we've got to incentivize new entities coming into town because otherwise they've got a million choices. Why would a, a company choose to set up shop here? Many of these cities, now they're looking for that next big wave of something giant to come back in and just save it, right? This kind of superhero type approach, which I don't think is going to occur right now. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, who knows if the next person that comes up with the next thing like Nike or somebody is born in Johnstown, he comes back and brings an industry, or maybe they jump on board with some alternative energy fuel, but that's not gonna occur tomorrow. The things that got us here won't get us to the future. Uh, we need to think in intelligent ways about creating a place where people wanna come back to. Many people have left and the boomerangs that have knowledge and experience from working in other areas in all kinds of different domains, if we can find intelligent ways to attract them back here, I think that's a really big win. Silicon Valley is Silicon Valley for a reason. We'll never be Silicon Valley, but this area between uh, Pittsburgh and Penn State is remarkable. It's built the nation essentially from here, from everything from steel to bricks, and people that have migrated all over the country have come through this area. With our talent centers that we have in higher education and the companies that we have, there are intelligent ways that we can connect them in a more meaningful way and actually grow the economy and grow the ability for us to have the jobs that could attract boomerangs back here. 35%, that's a lot. I think the county rate is 14%, and I think the state rate's around 12% live in poverty. We're 35%. We need more than just one or two people bringing in jobs. And the local politicians, you know, ask them, when's the last time they brought in a job? That's what their jobs are, okay? I think they need to be bringing some economic opportunity to this area. Last mayor of the city said, we've got a problem here that's getting worse. So he went down to McKeesport and talked to the mayor of McKeesport, who has a very similar problem to Johnstown, and said, what are you doing to fix this problem? Altoona did it a little differently. Altoona set up a commission and said, all right, we'll have a chairman appoint five people, have the council appoint one person each, and that was the model Johnstown took. They asked me to be the chairman of the commission, to write a report within six months to make suggestions on what needs to be done. We did that. Most of the recommendations we made were never followed through on. I'm in the Greater Johnstown School District and I had my children going there. And I experienced before I was on council, I had trouble with the district not doing what they needed to do for my kids. I had kids that were falling behind. One was bored and one needed more help and I was asking them for testing and things. And I waited a year and they didn't help me, so I pulled them out and cyber schooled them and actually one skipped a grade and the other one we got help and came on level. And then we put them actually back in school for a year and monitored them with testing. 
and their scores fell back down again. And not only did their scores fall, um, our one child was getting pretty mercilessly uh, bullied and abused to the point where I even have it on video at one of their band concerts, kids doing this. And other kids there were telling me about it happening and I went and talked to the band teacher after it. He said, oh, I, I didn't know of this. My other child who now was in the same grade said to him, yeah, you did because we've told you for the last year. And I said, don't worry, I'll give it to the principal and we'll be pulling our kids out again. I'm like pretty much a new guy on the block, you know. I've been here for nine years, going on 10 or whatever the case may be, and I'm still new. The NFL Play 60 is new here in Johnstown. And a lot of people don't know how to take to it. A lot of these people probably got ripped off at one time. I don't know, you know, but I let them know that I'm not here for that. A lot of people that I talk to, Parents wanted their kids to play tackle and all this with equipment. The kid never played a lick of football. Uh, my thing was this, and I always said this, it's not about the parents, it's about the kids. We had 10 kids come out to register today. Pretty good turnout. Just getting the kids signed up, that's the main thing, you know what I mean? People who've been here for years, they've had doors closed to them that they just kind of gave up. And he has the consistency, the persistence to keep chasing it until the opportunity comes into play. Because he sees a need, he's not going to waver because of adversity, and he's not from here, so he doesn't have the same mentality of who he thinks should be in charge of something. He doesn't have the oh, this person's in charge, that means I can't get it. I got some feedback, and they was telling me that the lead wasn't going to be no good. You can't run a lead. You don't know how to run a lead. These are people that don't know me, don't know who I am, don't know what I was about. So they just out there talking. So to prove it to myself and to have doubters eat their words, I did that, and I showed them you know, we're going to have a good lead with you, but that we're going to do this. That you can take to the bank. He, he going to do it, no matter what. It's going to be haters. It's going to be people saying it can't be done. And then it's over, he's going to do it. Eddie's doing the football. He'll get a big turnout. Get him, get him, get him. Get him. Good job, good job, good job. Grassroots, because he's a person from the community. He's going to run into parents, kids, mothers within the community. Now, the, the thing is, is how do you get better coaches? How do you get facilities? I know my wife just called me, but she's not answering. She ain't back from the doctor yet. If I can change this year, what I would change, I would change to spend more time with my wife. That's the most important thing I would change. I don't think she'd give a, a hoot what I'm doing for as football, whatever. She don't care about that. You know, she tells me that. And um, I'm, I'm getting a picture. I'm getting a real clear understanding that she don't care. She won't help me out when I do ask her. She don't want nothing to do with part of football because it takes away a lot. I'm beginning to understand it. Last winter season is the first season that I didn't coach a basketball team because so much conflict comes in. It is one of the problems that I feel like we have here. It can get territorial. When I coached in Norfolk, Virginia, everybody was just really interested in seeing the kids succeed. Here, there is a desire to see the kids succeed, but there's also this like, no, not you. There's this circle of people who kind of want to control the scenario. But then on council, these groups of people who were in opposition had people go after my family, harass me, stalk me. Since now it's stopped, but at the time it was pretty heavy. After he was convicted of harassing my family in the courts, they put him as a security guard in the elementary school that my children were in. And I sent a letter to the school. I also went to the school and asked them for a response and they didn't even have the decency to respond to my letter telling me that we have your letter. They just didn't respond to me.
that began the issuance into the research of who their third party employees are because it was my contention that this person was hired through a third party using our taxes. as a political payback and hit on someone that they were going after. Yes, Mr. Grassi, this is Kevin Price returning your phone call. You can call the office back. Uh, thank you. Have a good day. That's what it is. Call old spirits to this town and won't die. It's the people that in their 80s and their 90s won't let Johnstown grow to become something different. Johnstown could become a beautiful town. And I've seen beautiful people from different colorful walks of life all over. I don't care they from the countryside. I've seen all the beautiful parts of Johnstown, and it's beautiful but they don't highlight that. The news highlight nothing but the wrong stuff. These are real old buildings. They've been here since the uh, flood, bro. This is my bungalow. I don't know how long we're gonna be here, but this is the start. And it's how you hook your house up. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> it is exactly the purview of the politicians because it is the politicians that set these organizations up. And why do they do this? Well, let's face it. One, they want to help their region. But why do they want to help their region? They want to be reelected. So along the way, since I've been here, um, we've had things like the 2020 Regional Vision Project. This was started by the young professionals. We raised money from several community uh, organizations to help understand what would attract and retain young professionals in the area. This was done a number of years ago and remains a backdrop um, and also a catalyst for many of the activities that are happening today. At the same time, the city said, well, if we're going to reorganize the assets or attract business, we need to have a master plan. So they spend a significant amount of funding on developing the master plan for the city that would help understand where to prioritize investments and locate companies. And I think a lot of people are doing things in the spirit of them. And uh, the question is, what will it take to win and get the ball over the goal line? We're just marching from down to down at this point. It's like we have some of these resources in these communities, but there aren't people to connect the dots and put the kids at the center of, here is this incredible kid who we want to thrive. What are the supports needed for this kid to actually stay in this community and have a profession that allows that person to have a family and feel stable and supported? There really does, I think, need to be this intentional conversation at the high school level around where do you want to go and how do we get there? Greater Johnstown does an incredible job at giving people the opportunity to succeed. Not everybody's going to succeed. To have the opportunity is what the American dream's about, and that's based on do you have a chance? Johnstown does an incredible job at getting people and kids who are willing to work really hard into college and beyond. So I think the schools work very well on the monies that they're given. Where did it go? According to state investigators, the Greater Johnstown School District cannot account for a massive amount of money. This is over 10 years and four audits, so trying to figure out exactly where that money went. They say there's no receipts and no documentation. Where's the referee out there? I was waiting for the yes, old This is it? Okay. Okay. If I did, I'm going to don it. Are you aware of the PA Auditor General's finding on the $3.9 million? No. It's $8.7 million, but it's $3.9 million from, the, came from yes. the citizens of Johnstown's pocket. They're saying that they cannot account for it. And our thing is, if you're going to tax me with money, and you can't account for it, return it to the taxpayers so that you can spend it. Let's start with these three, okay? Fine. Okay. <laughs> 
they assure us that there is no money missing. Um, we will wait for the Auditor General to come back and we'll see what his findings are. They cannot give us details on who the third party employees are. We ask that all be listed online. Well, we list our, all our employees, our public employees. The other individuals are private contractor with their own employment. Maybe what happens is it's not out in the public that the public doesn't know about it. But we have a lot of these policies that are already in place right now. And they're all available and, on your website currently, right? Um, I'm not sure if all the policies are available on web on our website, but we do have policies in place for everything. I would like to know who has access to my children, whether they're through the school district or through a third party. Um, they need to make that available to the parents so we know who's in touch with our children. Every individual that comes on the school ground is in touch with uh, children. Has to, has to pass a child line clearance and a criminal background check. Right. Every individual that does come into our school and is in, in contact with children has passed it. If you get clearances, you have to just trust, trust your government that they think everything's okay and as a parent of a child, you have no say in who comes in contact with your child. Being a coach myself, you know, and having teams throughout all the years I have been coaching, a lot of coaches, they come and go. You know, they dislike the kids, they come and go. Push come to shove, you might, you guys might have to coach together, man. You feel what I'm saying? You can be the head coach or you can be the head coach, it don't matter. But I'm saying, y'all guys might have to take the Eagles over. What do you want to get another yeah. coach? I'd get another coach too. Right? Hell yeah. And that way we can come with at least 16. We did reach a goal that I set the beginning of the year to have four teams if we couldn't have the eight or 10 or whatever. And we played the eight on eight. A lot of those coaches didn't come back. If it comes down to it, can three of you guys handle it? I believe we can. I mean, things do happen. I mean, where, where people got to work, I mean, but don't say you're going to be somewhere and you're not there. I mean, that's my thing. Yeah. Well, I'll be up there, coach. I'll be up there. Same people there all the time. <laughs> Eddie Taylor, he's forming these basketball leagues and these football leagues pretty much on his own. He's doing a tremendous job. He's uh, got the kids playing. I met him. I donated to his leagues. And I'll continue to donate. I played ball all my life. And I was a, I was a devilish kid. You know, I was you know, being a musician and an entertainer. You can go astray, but having that next game or that practice, that gives you a different kind of focus. The YMCA was what I knew about because I was here in Johnstown. I did have a membership to the Y, so I knew about their league. I went up there and I saw some games going on because of being a member. They were in the gym playing games, and I thought to myself, man, these kids are great athletes. I wish somebody was really coaching them because they could be great. I saw the potential of it, but they were playing in a league. When I got to East Hill Rec, I stopped doing it at the Y period because East Hill Rec was so much more organized. They started when they say they're going to start. They had a packet, you knew when your games were going to be, the why, you you never knew, you would get, you know, bad information, they would change stuff, they would email you. Every time they say they're going to have a girls league, it ends up folding because they only get one or two people. So the Y's 5th and 6th grade girls league pretty much got squashed. Yo, no eating on the job, my man. <laughs> no eating on the job. You know when black people take a break, they break. They never come back off a break. This is to raise money to help get more jerseys for the kids. That's why we're doing this. And not just only that, help cover the trophies and all that. When it was time to get things that we need, I reached out to certain sponsors that helped out from people that donated money to us. Everybody's not as fortunate as others. If it was up to me, the child would play for free, but it wasn't my calling. We have facilities. The Y is one of the facilities, but so is the high school and the elementary school and the middle school. That's why I like the way they do it at Greater Johnstown. Those programs, after school programs, are good programs and you should build on those. And nonprofits that do that type of work ought to be able to use those facilities to do things that kids want to be part of. At 
the YMCA has added some middle school initiative now where they allow kids to come there. But it used to be if you didn't have a membership, you couldn't go to the Y. And memberships cost, you know, your parent has to have the money to get you a membership and they also going to draft the money from that account on a monthly basis and everybody's not in a position to do that. If we are under the normal system that uh, most everybody runs today, we could easily run 15 kids through here every three days. At the end of the month, we got 200 kids through. It'd make a heck of a photo op. I'd much rather have 50 kids that we bring in, we run them through, then we take them to the next step where they come in. And now, what did you learn over here? What did you learn over here? So now you learn more and you learn more. Now you're getting excited. You're bringing your friends in and you become peer mentor. You're improving their lives. You're not just running them through so then it looks good on a piece of paper so it can get a grant. Do you feel a lot of nonprofits are run that way? Yeah. The fact that we have concentrations of nonprofit entities providing services to a big region and having the burden of their existence fall on a municipality is the same argument we've been making. The lack of wealth, but the overall economics of the municipality uh, oftentimes is, is helped by the presence of nonprofits. The problem is we're required to levy property taxes on nonprofits, and municipal governments tend to think of nonprofits as the enemy. They would much rather put their money into capital, into initiatives that, that they see have longer term impact than simply balancing a budget year over year. Remember, they don't have to pay taxes because they're exempt from it. That's part of the legal framework they work under. To cast the nonprofits as the sole villain is the wrong light to put on it. Every area where we go to, I look for, you know, a response. And what's that we dig is some response. I can recruit a thousand kids. Out of that a thousand kids, maybe a hundred kids will come out. You get a hundred out of that thousand, you're good. You want me to drive it for you? No! You get a ride, man. We got a lot of response out of Solomon, Moxham area, Hornistown area. What? The spot is empty. A couple of areas, no response at all. Shut your hair. But with this right here, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get it going oh, hopefully from next year for the older guy. Look, now you look like under. Westmont, Wimber, or whatever, a lot of those people are scared to come down here. But what reason, I don't know. Kernville, Solomon, Oakhurst, these are where the, the black people are at. These are where these people are at located. Now, when you look at the, the geographicals of it, look where they, they stick everything up. A far up here on a hill away from up in Richland. And you glamorize all their kids and children up there. Now, I mean, that, cause that's what it's about. I think more so than, than most places in the country, We've got a separation. We've got a two-class system. You know, we've, we've got people that kind of enjoy a quality of life here and, and live comfortably. They can send their children elsewhere to be educated. They can afford the, the possibilities of getting outside the region. And you've got kind of everybody else that's kind of stuck here waiting for a chance or an opportunity. There's a small group of individuals that are doing well and have that kind of mobility here. And there's not a channel for enough of that to make it out to folks that have only ever known this town and have only ever known the steel industry and the mining industry. Well, what if we could raise the money just for the equipment and supplies? Do you think there'd be enough volunteers among this group or others that would help operate some of that. Yeah. Right now, I'm willing to write some grants as Mr. Dumby is, but to kick this off this summer in one neighborhood, to give it a shot to, to help younger kids. It's when... community development, and the money already exists. Okay, it so is, we're one step ahead then. It's already in the 2016 budget. You know, if we are willing to invest in education and, I, and that connecting the dots of, in addition to some big industries, there's economic development and job nonprofits whose, whose jobs are to work with different businesses to figure out what their needs are. And it's that connection of these career type opportunities with schools that I think somebody needs to take the lead and say, 
we're going to take this on as a community in Johnstown of we're going to make an mission as businesses, as local business owners, to help to foster and facilitate success of people from our community because ultimately our strongest employees are the ones loyal to this community. There are a lot, uh, Vincent. So when, we, when we first started, when I, I talk about 1979, 78, uh, I, I don't know if New Day was probably the only one. There, there have been, you know, just scores of organizations that have that have started since since we did back in the 70s. What we've tried to, we've always thought that, you know, there's plenty of work. You know, there's enough need out there. Our concern is the spiritual health of people, and don't don't really feel that we uh, that we're in competition, you know, with anybody. I feel bad for them because that's the system. That is a system. It's survival. It's survival. So you go from this grant to this grant to this grant, and you lose the sight what you're doing. If we use the same criteria, I'm much better off having three outstanding programs than 15 below average programs. Of the $6.4 million that we spend on public high schools, 1.5 goes immediately through their fingers out to these charter schools and cyber schools. We don't have the money for that. And the money has to come from somewhere. And where it came from was the billion dollars that they took out of the 500 public schools. That's one of the things that I've been talking about for eight years. I continue to believe it's killing our public school system more than anything else. Let's say I have six kids, five kids going right now to school, but then six. Multiply that by $16,000. Write me the check every year. I'll see that they get educated. I mean, I could have multiple tutors come to my house for a couple hours a day and teach my kids. Is it working out for your kids then that they're in? It's difficult, but yeah, it's better than what's over there. At least I don't have to have emotional and psychological issues. Um, and the education that they receive over there is poor. I mean, they'll hold up a few kids that do well, but I mean, statistically in the curve, the, the, the group of that curve is all the way at the bottom. It'd be nice if the whole curve was pushed to where they were at least on par with what they had to be for the state, which isn't, I mean, we're not reaching for stars here. We're just on par. And they're not, they're, they're way below that. I'm asking for the school board to come clean. Stand up and say, no, we are not corrupt. Why can't you list all employees of the district, including all of the employees and all programs of third-party organizations? Is that because you don't want to open up the corruption that is going on? And is that why you are being investigated by the Auditor General, and as rumor has it, the FBI? Lastly, we've heard rumors, Mr. Unger, that you were released from your job at the county and that you may perhaps be re resigning over criminal allegations of your own. I would ask for... We just heard rumors. Well, I had to ask you. Okay, and, I'm, and I've answered that. Okay. So if you bring it up again, we're going to have a lawsuit. There's no criminal action against me. You make all these naked allegations. Right. FBI's investigating us, and Auditor General's investigating us, Attorney General's investigating us. I know of no one that's investigating us. Where's the evidence that we're being investigated by the FBI? I'm asking. We've heard rumors. No, you said. Oh, I heard this rumor. If I don't ask you, I how do I know? I heard this rumor by you. I heard this rumor by you. I heard this rumor by you. I'll be leaving soon if you need to talk to me. Be my yes. If I hear any more, whether whatever it may be, we're going to have a lawsuit. This is That's the first call. and only time I've said that. Okay. Right. I, I have been very critical about the third party. As you heard during my speech, I still believe the school should release that information. Okay. You have the power to do that. I don't know what, what you're hiding. All right. You're done. Thank you. Yeah. So there's an affidavit on file. Many of them. That says, as a school district, they don't know who's employed there. 
or employed to work at the school through third-party contractors. And they fought us on, on many aspects of, some, sometimes we win small victories like the definition of all, because we asked for all the employees of the school, but we had to keep fighting them to pull out this information. Listen, I am not a handyman, okay? Hey, water. I didn't. I didn't. Come on. I didn't get water. Those guys, they ready for us, man. Yo, guys, come here. You know, these are kids. These are first and second grade kids. This is their learning stage. That takes time. So, have patience. Billy, back up. That's your warning, yeah, Coach you Billy. Yo, little guys, you got to give them time, man. Okay. I'm more like a hands-on coach. I'm not. Well, if you don't want your kid to be touched or none of that, don't let them come out here. I'm sorry. Spread. Spread out. Spread. Right there, right here. But I don't manhandle a kid or, you know, even if a kid is bad, if they're parent out there, come get your son. I respect that because that parent don't want that. First of all, I'm not on the field. I'm over here. Let's go, let's go. I'm not I don't, no, he ain't talking to me. I'm so sick of him. He can go to hell in a handbasket. But I have to respect my program, and they have to respect my program. Coming up next year, if I hear anything out the way, if I hear any argument, any cursing or anything, you will be removed from the field. It's a kid's league. This is for the kids. That, that's all I was This is for the children, not for the coaches. Now, first it was nobody can block the center. Now it's nobody can line up on the center. That You don't change the rules to suit yourself. You keep the rules for every team the same way for the kids. You think the kids understand the rules? Somewhat. There's some kids out there that do understand the rules, yeah. I think he just wants his team to win. They want to do it, but they don't know how to do it. They only hearing things or seeing things on TV for his football and thinking that this league's supposed to be running like that. No, no. Time is on our side because that's what we have. It's time to show them. Some people can be comfortable for where they're at. I need more, I want to do more. A lot of people is content. You know, and I tell my sons that don't get content with this. You know I mean? Don't get content with what your surroundings because it all can go. Thank you. It's an honor to represent all of you, even if we get blasted. That students have the opportunity to be introduced to things that we have not seen in many years in the elementary level due to funding. Still waiting on that funding, too. Did you know that the students surveyed in your district at the Johnstown Middle School, 30.5% uh, plan to pursue a science, technology, engineering, or math. So STEM, building up for a STEM academy, versus the 31% nationally. So we're close to that mark, but they didn't have a STEM academy in place yet. Good evening, my dear friends. I am here tonight to help those that cannot speak for themselves, to support and represent the voiceless gays, transgender, bisexual, and others that have no voice to be the person that they are. I'm really surprised the school board is not following through on some of the things they have mentioned before, like suicide prevention, anti-bullying, and taking the parents and children of this district more seriously. We are asking for the school board to adopt a hate crimes policy and to enforce an anti-bullying policy to protect the children of the school and to address the Baratko's complaints tonight and take action. Good evening, school board members and guests. My name is Johanna Baratko, and I'm here to discuss the true bullying in our school district. My two sons are being bullied. One is because he's gay, and because of the bullying, he started cutting himself. My other is being, is being bullied because his brother is gay, and he is, cannot defend himself, which makes him an easy target. Why are the teachers not aware of the seriousness of the bullying problem in this district? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate the call. But um, Mrs. Arcurio met with the uh, 
uh, middle school administration, and they immediately called Mr. and Mrs. Barackle. You never know until it's reported to. Yeah, and at this point, Mrs. is our chair. I think you did an outstanding job of trying to resolve a problem. Mr. Unger, they've been complaining for years to you. I'm sorry. They've been complaining for how, how long have you been complaining? I don't complain. All right, listen. All right, that discussion has ended. The questions were answered. So, House uh, coverage is coming now, David. Huh? House coverage is just coming to the board today. Yeah. It's been well, happening for years. It, House coverage just come here today. Man, hold it, hold it. Uh, yeah, hold it. Discussion's over. Over. And what's amazing is they didn't want the board members to speak. The minute they spoke, yeah. they had to shut them down because of those board members, and they have the right to question. Yeah. They, they really have been complaining for how long? It's been yes. since uh, Jacob's sixth grade year. So for two years? So, yes. We had 200 people here in October for the protest, and they weren't okay. allowed. If you notice tonight, there were 30 people in there. We had to wait till six. It was just a tactic. Well, when you have a mother who stands by you and supports you, you know how amazing that is? Now, because of the TV and the paper, which I know is horrible to go through at your age, if you wouldn't have had that coverage tomorrow, nothing would change. So let's do this. The next meeting, I I'll let you know before the deadline. And we'll okay. do the same thing. That's fine. And we'll just we'll register for March. I saw a school board member who has a right to ask questions hushed and pushed us bullied by the board president uh, which if you're setting an example that's certainly not one of not bullying people will be back and they'll keep coming back until we get answers and until changes happen you want number two I'm from a family of 12 I didn't have a lot when I was growing up pretty much I didn't have nothing have been nights and days that I didn't even eat. The water seemed closed to school every week, you know? So I know how to appreciate things when I do get it. I don't want these kids to go through the same things I did when I was growing up. They should have more things offered to them. And being those when I was little growing up, we didn't have to pay to play. We just went out there to play. You know, I know and I see in people's faces that I walk around here every day that they're stressed. Especially if you don't have a job, you don't got nothing to do. Come on, man, I want to give you something to do. I go through it every day. Our own families and in the Pittsburgh area around steel mill communities, you know, a lot of those men who lost those jobs just started going to the bars every day and became alcoholics and became addicted in all kinds of ways and their self-esteem dropped and they didn't ever find a way to get back on their feet and that transferred to the next generation, this sense of learned helplessness that can be a culture of poverty and despair. There's people out there drowning in Johnstown like this, barely can stay afloat. They rather say, I'd rather get caught holding a bundle, I'd rather get caught getting help with some bricks than not get caught and be out here starving. They're getting forced. And then you say there's enough jobs. Okay. Either when people come into town, they don't have much in the way of money, or they don't want to spend the money on luxurious living when they can spend all their money on the drugs and drug dealing. The drug use is all around. Uh, but in terms of the drug deals and the drug-related violence, uh, a lot of that are, are related to the low-income housing areas. Well, we don't control the lives of the individuals. I mean, we, our job is to house the individuals. And a lot of people are coming in to sell drugs. Well, so they say push out the pushers. Well, you're going to push out people that live in Philadelphia to come here? They come here, they drop their drugs off, they roll out. It's a big drug war. It's just like Al Capone and the Italians in Chicago in the 20s. It's not any different. They were struggling, they found a way to make a buck. These guys are selling drugs, they have a whole underground economy, it's a turf war, that's where the shootings come from. We're really bursting at the seams, believe it or not, because there's so many economically disadvantaged people that don't have an opportunity to make a higher income. And if they made a higher income, they wouldn't be living in our place. When you talk just heroin, these aren't drugs that are produced locally, of course, you know. This is just another one of those ways that the little bit of economy that, it, that exists here is being weaned off to these outside entities. That's only going to dig the hole deeper and deeper and deeper. Hi, this message is for Vincent um, Grassi. My name is um, Jen. I'm calling from the Cambria County District Attorney's Office. Um, I had received a message from you about um, our push out the pusher statistics, and um, I was just kind of calling you back to 
see um, what it was that you really needed. Um, we didn't really keep actual statistics. Um, we don't have like a an ongoing record of this is how many arrests and this is um, from because in 2016 we we got new police software and so all we do is we track the number of calls and um, so we have we just have a total number of calls that one of the detectives um, takes from the line. So um, if you need to have that, um, you can give me a call back. The number here is area code eight one four. Four seven two one six eight zero, and this is Jen. Thank you. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. How you feel? How you feel? Yeah, it turned out a lot better than what people thought it would. You know, we have a lot more participants with it than people anticipated. You know, I always had Tuck, Pennsylvania as a football state. Uh, everybody football oriented in this state. You got a lot of good colleges around here. I love football. This is where I can grow at for as a football program. Who game is this? Ah! Who game is this? Ah! Hard work on three. Let's go. One, two, three. Oh good first half. We jumping off sides. They little penalty on you off sides. Cool. Oh uh, guys, y'all have a problem out there? Let me know. All right? What is that? Can you do it in the line? No, thank you. <laughs> Take it anyway. They haven't had flag football here in Johnstown in four years. When I came and I mentioned it to the high school programs, everybody said it was a good idea. They never really heard of it. Yeah, there was flag at one point in time, and then about maybe four or five, maybe six years ago, they stopped because of all the funding going down. And so I, Coach Taylor decided to throw up a league for all the kids that couldn't play and were interested, and he threw this league together, which is actually coming out really well for him. I left the independent team up in New Jersey, and I asked my brother, I said, do they have any independent teams down there that, you know, I could come down here and start up my own team or whatever? He said, yeah, man, come on down. And then he, he thought of it, he said, you know what? Under Allen Andrews, he had a flag team. 1K, 2K. What year was this? I came here in 07. My brother introduced me to him, and I just tucked off from there. I started coaching third and fourth grade tackle. The third year, when I was coming out to coach, he didn't have the lead no more. And um, I was like, whoa, what's, what's going on? I know one time the Johnstown police used to be the referees in our summer rec program, okay, and um, uh, that was that was well, they got extra pay for that under that program. But see, those programs are, are not out there like they used to be. And for us, when we lost the, the drug elimination program, which was a very very good program, Congress pulled it, and and to me um, uh, that hurt a lot of kids. And there were a lot of good things that happened there. But I, I think uh, it's going to be hard to fill a void like summer in the city if it would not exist this year. I, I hear they're trying to get some individuals to keep that afloat. Coach Taylor fills a lot of the voids with what he does, with the, with the basketball and the football. But there are some other things that, that were accomplished through these programs, ours included, that the void will never be filled. Are they doing enough then to reach out to kids, maybe? And do these um, kids have access? I would say that the kids do have access because they do have after-school programs that the kids are in. The kids do participate in the summer programs. But like anything else, if you have a certain amount of money at the state and you allow that money to be diverted, even if it's a good idea, but you divert a lot of the money, then you're going to have less money available to resolve the most critical problems. That's the mistake. It's not the high school's fault.
if the school is doing it, they don't need to get permission from themselves. They have access to all the kids that are school age in the school. So they can make an announcement every morning. They can pass out the papers. They can make have the teachers make sure the papers get back to them. They don't have to do the legwork. They literally have access to every youth in the community. Whereas Eddie doesn't. Eddie only has access to the people he runs into in the grocery store. Over the course of time, he's had the help of a newspaper might write an article about him or, you know, a TV, whatever. That's That comes and it goes and then you're forgotten. So the school definitely has the upper hand. Mr. Andrews, when he had to leave, and it was pretty much, I, I thought maybe his prices was outrageous for the kids, whether it was tackle. I ran a tackle lead in New Jersey. My registration was only 20 bucks. He's charging the kids 75, 50 bucks to play. Then it moved from that group to the school and it started to exclude people. So what do you think uh, the interest left then for Johnson? Uh, probably because some of the coaches and some of the parents didn't get along and so they decided to keep their kids out of it until you know they found somewhere where they felt comfortable. Well, the high school took over the city league football, politics. He didn't do this out of competing with what somebody else was already doing. He said it from day one, as soon as they cut it, he was like, I'm gonna do a flag football league myself. I don't know if they are only doing it in response to the fact that Eddie's doing it. I don't know. As I'm here to tell you there are things going on in your school department that you would be horrified at. Your children can't be safe in the hallways at school. They aren't safe on our school buses. They aren't safe on school property, off of school property. It's pretty scary. And where I come from, I want accountability. I want to bang for my dollar, and I'm getting none, none in this city, and it just pisses me off to no end. And you know what? You fucked with my grandbabies, babe, so you know what? Grandma's going to chew you up and spit your sorry ass out, and I'm going to start with that dumb asshole right there in the doorway that's looking at me. Well, they told me they were going to pull the kid off the bus and suspend him off the bus permanently. They never did. He was never pulled off the bus. I was told, I called up and I said, why is this kid still on the bus? You promised me he would be removed. And then hung up on me. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, this kid sexually assaulted my son. Totally neglected. Totally neglected. And nobody would help me. Not one person. So we fell into silence. There was nobody that could help. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the Board of Education, as well as administrators and to the public. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Pennsylvania Association of School Business Officials. We found that the record keeping and the practices uh, that were recommended for subsidy reimbursement have improved tremendously. But we believe that when the Auditor General returns, that the Auditor General's office will be extremely pleased. We love you, and like I said, you do what's best for the children, best for the poor. Most of all, you do what's best for the community with the money. Thank you. So, thank you. Outrageous. Yes. We can't speak. We have to sit through two hours of BS. We're gonna, we're gonna sit there and wave around all the crap we do for the school. That's that's BS. My kids have been sitting here for almost three hours patiently, and I got to get them dinner. Guess what? Tomorrow's another day, and that's fine with me because they they have another thing coming tomorrow. The next person on the agenda was a issue that needed to happen in executive session. That's why the people in the front row are now in executive session. They'll come out and the meeting continues with the hearing of citizens. I've been for a year's worth of meetings. You come at the beginning and you leave. You've never stayed for a full school board meeting. So tonight you'll get to see the totality of the business of our school district. So oh, I'm this will be attention. the Toastmasters Club was amazing. Oh, and they were it? amazing. Yeah. But the fact that this is this show of what is going on. Yeah. It just proves the arrogance. We have to really oh, showcase yeah. the wonderful I'm things sure that are know. happening. Are there usually 20 some speakers talking? No, there isn't, but we have just had an amazing the amount of opportunities. You have this month you have 20 some. We'll wait. No, There's no one good. There's no problem. We're all That's friends. That's good. We're all Absolutely. Friends. Please wait.
I'll continue to call the Board of Education on the school district. It's disgusting what goes on in these schools. And I can't help but wonder, sir, how many children are being picked on, teased, and bullied that are suffering in silence because they're too afraid to come forward because of the ramifications to their children and to mommy and daddy. But I got news for them. I've been flooded with phone calls with parents that are feeling the same way we are. Uh, the tactics they use, again, is bullying. It starts at the top and trickles down. Politically, I don't think that the community even looks to the government as a resource to solve problems. I think they do look at the school more so like there is a mistrust when it comes to who's being hired, who's in position as far as the coaching and all that stuff is going on. Because we've seen people be passed over that should be in certain positions, there has to be a reason that some of this is happening. A lot of times citizens don't know who's on the school board. They certainly know their local school but they don't understand the difference between both the responsibilities and the elected officials. They do know that the one wallet that is tapped is theirs. And that's one of the biggest problems in Pennsylvania. It's a common tax base to support a variety of government functions. You could tell people there's a state ethics investigation. I filed all the complaints. You could make it public, put it in the paper, and they'll still vote for the same person because he's really a nice guy. You have to know what's going on. It's like they're flying blind. You know what I mean? The whole city of Johnstown. You go to the council meeting? Oh, yes. It's a circus. <laughs> That's when I was under 200 pounds. I was in ninth grade. <laughs> this bully pulled down his pants to expose his private parts to both boys and told them to perform oral sex on him. Immediately, I reported it to the school officials. I was told that the proper authorities would be put into place to handle the situation. I was told that my son's perpetrator would be permanently removed from the bus, only to see that he had not been removed at all. Upon calling the school, I was told that he was moved to a different seat. That's it. There was no response to the incident. Enough is enough. It's time for the school board to change from top to bottom. There is no accountability in this school board. It's all covered up. If the covers are not taken off, all the greed, the power struggle, the control issues, the corruption, the sheer ignoring of all that is going on in the school system itself with our kids, yes, there will be a day we will have a combined situation. It's time to call out those who are damning our children for their own personal gains. Nothing was done for my son. Nothing. Third grade, I called CYS. I called the law. Okay. Yes, um, hi, my name is Robin Kometz. I am the grandmother of Derek Kometz. Derek has been bullied, teased, picked on, shoved, pushed, spit on, lunches thrown out of moving school buses. Now he's been assaulted on a school bus, and I would like something done about your bullying. I hate to disappoint you, but we care very much about our child. I have been working with the family, and I just would like to note that um, Mrs. Kometz is a concerned um, grandmother, um, however, she is not the legal guardian of the child, so um, as school policy is, we cannot share information with her that has to come from her son to her. So there's a little bit of a difficult time communicating because she doesn't have access, um, because she doesn't have rights to have that information. Excuse me, that's not true. Um, my son, every school year, signs all of the necessary uh, release forms to give the school permission to speak to me because my son goes to work every day in this city. He works two jobs, he works hard, and I take care of his children. So I'm the person usually the school is calling, not daddy. So the fact that um, there is no, uh, you know, communication is not true. And with 10 youth sports, NFL play 60 flag football league, also do weddings and private parties too. First Super Bowl in Johnstown, first and second year. Really, we wasn't really supposed to have a Super Bowl, but I said, being though it's the NFL, let's do a Super Bowl. We was going to do championships, and it gives the kids something to reach for. Super Bowl on three. One, two, three. Super Bowl! Well, the first game, we had a little problem for us, the clock. The clock was on, you know, managed. And uh, we went over a little longer than we were supposed to have. The train don't stop, it keeps going. Gotta get Audrey in on that pass, all right? 
You just think you can pass? I'm going to play safe. What's your record? You don't have to with this game. Bring it in. Tyler's going to be right here. Yeah. You're going to be standing right beside Tyler. You take the two guys that are in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, let's go, gentlemen. Defense. Did you need a win this year? No, I didn't. We didn't need no win. We didn't. It wasn't about winning. You're in crisis, the best thing to do is nothing. You let the con settle and then you deal with it. And you'll see that that's repeated throughout the garden. That's how you deal with crisis. We don't do that, it's a knee jerk reaction, let's go shoot somebody. Or beat them up or whatever it may be. We'll teach you a lesson. I'm here tonight as a community spokesperson, a corruption advocate for truth, a man of the people, and a protector of the bullied and forgotten innocent students. That you believe that you have a right to be an arrogant board, that you have the right You're to done. rule. You're done. This is for you, sir. You're done. Complain to the State Ethics Commission. To That's fine. Thank you. And you're in I will Thank you. She is unable to be here this evening. Yeah. You're not. I just. This goes. I was going to present it to you, but you cut me off. Well, she wrote. You're I was you're not, sir. You're violating the rules, that's why, sir. As you laugh at me again. You won't accept this to review it? No, I'll take it. The rule. I'll take it. I'm out. Doesn't matter. I'm out. I'll dismiss myself because Yins are a bunch of fucking assholes. Get her, buddy. Get her. I want her to know that she's not allowed back in here. Here, here, here. He needs help. Yeah, he needs to go to John. Good job. That's Mr. very, very, Good job. very adult. Good. Good job. Hey, hey, you're going to be asked next to leave. You had your three minutes to talk. You don't sit back there. This is a school board meeting, not yours. So you just sit back there and listen from here on in, or I'll have you escorted out. Next, we'll hear from. Dan Stonerook? It's pronounced Stonerook. Uh, it's 2016. Why are actions of our elected officials being done so hush hush and see even secretly? Just because things are hidden. Your time is done. Your time is done. This is school board meeting. I can I'm not trying to waste time. Listen, I said you're done. I'm running this meeting. Not you, I am. I'm going to walk myself out, but before I leave, I just want to say that I've worked, in, I've worked in the middle school before. Uh, through a third party, party agency, and I've had teachers come hey, to me and confide in me about, about the administration being nothing but hot air. And, and there's no actions being done. It's all air. It's all, it's all talk. <laughs> nothing ever is done. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. All right. All right. Back in the voice of it was 7-7. Seven, seven. It was a tie score, pretty much. And they, I think they scored the last touchdown, and that would win the game. It was only like 20-something seconds left in the game. I touch them all I want. These are my kids. All of them. Angry? I wasn't really angry. Oh, these are mine. Oh, I understand that. You shouldn't be here. I put my hands on any kid. Doesn't I put my hands on any kid. Doing the game, doing the game. All I did is told him to back up. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Shut the back up. I just went just like that. I watched him. Because he fell into me. Oh, let's play the game. Tell you the truth, I would have won that game easily. I didn't want to win that game because I didn't want to hear the back talk about I was cheating and all that because that was already out there to try to say that I was. Why would I cheat kids for? For what? But that was their theory. I wouldn't say nothing to you because you're a coach. You've been coaching these kids all year. It doesn't matter, coach. Yeah, I don't want you touching my kids. I'm going to touch them because they belong to me. This is my league. I'm going to touch them regardless. Whether you like it or not, if you don't like it, leave. There's kids out here. Can y'all just stop? Well, I'm just only letting them know. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go.
What's called a summary hearing was held today at the Cambria County Courthouse for a woman who's charged in a rare First Amendment case. It all started back in March when a mother of a student at Greater Johnstown Middle School was thrown out of a school board meeting after losing her cool. Johanna Baratka was a mother with two children attending Johnstown Middle School. She, she says she went to the school board meeting to express her concerns about bullying and got cut off by board members. She then stormed out using inappropriate language and ended up with a criminal charge against her. And now she and her attorney are fighting it, saying freedom of speech is not illegal. Under the United States Constitution, it is protected free speech to use a profanity in a public setting, in particular towards an elected official. You know, that's the $64 million question. I originally was friends with Joe, doing, looking for the same information about the employment and it's been a non-stop battle. They tried to arrest me six times. They arrested Johanna Baradka, that made national news. They laugh at me, they smirk, they smear, they do everything they can to stall, attack, belittle. I don't understand it. How many officers were there too? Yes. Were you surprised to see that? Well, that they were there in February because they are, you know, they are scheduled. At least one of them are supposed to be there at all, all times at during the meetings. They knew there was more parents and uh, students speaking that night. They were almost anticipating something. Somebody, somebody is going to get upset. They didn't expect all of that, but they expect, okay, you're dismissed. Then they can just uh, escort them out the door. Yes, it was inappropriate, but I walked out. I was an upset parent. Everybody, half the boards got out of their seats, started chasing me down. The two resource officers did. That's where it came into the, why they didn't put me in handcuffs. It wasn't against the law and what I did. But they wanted me, because I embarrassed them and hurt their, you know, their ego, that they wanted to punish me and, oh, oh we'll crucify her because she swore at us. I have Vincent's officer has to get uh, unfortunately, uh, Officer Miller and I, we're going to be uh, filing charges against uh, one of the people that were at the board meeting there, and um, we decided it'd be wise for our case to, um, we were going to uh, subpoena um, the footage um, that was recorded there at the meeting, but the footage from the meeting was posted on social media, so we're going to... Um, Use it, use it that way so there'll be no need uh, for us to bother you in any way. So again, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I'm, I'm sure you're busy. I just wanted to touch base with you to let you know where we're at. And again, um, thank you for your time. You take care, sir. These are things that we didn't allow, you know, for us smoking, no cursing, and other things of that nature for us, you know, making it a good environment for the kids. But some parents we're dealing with not regular parents. Bullshit we don't. How don't we? In the heat of the moment, you get that in sports, in any sport. Then you calm down, then you look and recognize, damn, I did, did something wrong. I used to be that, that coach, too. I used to be that same coach. He, like, he tries to do everything. Yeah, he he tries to ref his game. <laughs> he tries to coach. He tries to do this. He tries to do that. Like, I just, like, you're allowed to lose. So the kids hear this. So whether you try to hide things like that and say, don't curse in front of the kids and this and that, that same person that you said don't curse in front of the kids, he the main one cursing in front of his kids. I just left it alone. I said my what I said and I left it alone. Jay, yeah. look in the picture, say cheese. 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 Good job, fellas. Cheese. Super Bowl champs. I went out and got all these kids, man. You understand that? This disputing that I couldn't do whatever. I do whatever I want. Not say disrespect anyone. But when it comes to football, if I see a kid and he's all size, I'm backing him up. He got out of he, he got it bent out of shape. Don't be touching our kids. Don't touch. Come on, man. 
I have personal problems, but I don't bring it here. You know what I mean? Family problems, I don't bring it here. Um, but other than that, I'm all right. I'm just worrying about my wife right now. Where's she? She's still down in Georgia. I gotta go get her. What are you gonna go down? I'm gonna have to go down. She's stuck down in Georgia, so I'm gonna have to go down there and get my wife. And that was the whole problem. She had got sick down there. I'm gonna try to get down there this week to get her. If not, be next week, but I gotta go get her. By me going away, me being away from here, it gives me more time to spend with my wife than get back some of the time that we lost. And that's what I'm doing. I think often kids aren't influenced by people older than them. I think they see it as this adult's telling you what to do and I'm not going to listen. They need people like the ones in this room to say, like people their age to say that it really does matter. Because I think that they'll understand when it comes from someone who's closer to them. Oh, we've known about it for a while. <laughs> Why does no one talk about this? I keep waiting for updates and no one... Because we can't... Uh, before we do public comment, I've been asked to read the following comment. As a result of our executive session, we wish to inform everyone that, that Council will consider a motion to turn over all information regarding Carlos Gumby to the law enforcement authorities, including the District Attorney of Cambria County. If I could steal $500,000 and get six months in the county jail for it, it's a pretty good incentive to steal it. I can't make $500,000 in six months, but if I steal it and somebody says, you're a bad boy, I go, yeah, $500,000, yeah, yeah, I'm bad. So why isn't Mr. Gumby being charged with stealing? And why isn't he, and not just him, but there's other people in council, and there's police officers, and I'm sure there's firemen. There's a lot of people in the city of Johnstown that are corrupt. Residents, business people, it's not just council people, it's everybody. Many of their relatives, friends, families, all in these school district, direct employment and employment through third party organizations like the Child Development Corp, the YMCA. So it's a family of ties? It's the appearance of nepotism as quoted by the Auditor General. Nepotism fits. Uh, if an entity or an individual has established that machine to, uh, to take advantage of, of what's uh, you know, publicly funded or whatever, we're not going to get anywhere from that either. Merry Christmas, Johnstown City Council. I find it important that a local body like you, which represents the community, look at the aspect of nepotism 
and how important it is that you represent the community and begin to move us forward, forward towards the future by dealing with issues such as this, you can really truly begin to bring the change to Johnstown that is necessary so we can move forward in the future rather than being stuck backwards. And I can relate this to when I talk about alcoholism. As the city deteriorates, then people are slowly seeing things, but they're not responding. When I first came here in uh, 2006, in the newspaper there used to be a little small section that was a crime section. And I used to laugh at it because it was just people was drunk and this person slapped somebody. It was like literally nothing. Now. The crime has changed to a lot more murder, a lot more drug buzz, you know, those type of things. When the changes were coming slowly, when there was an increase of small things, people didn't respond. And then they found themselves in an epidemic with heroin, an epidemic with violence, an epidemic with some of these other things. When someone puts, this town won't die, it's because they felt like there was something, an attack coming on the city that someone thought it might die. Whereas right now, again, slow deterioration, nobody's even necessarily getting in an uproar until it gets way over here into a really bad place. Is there a competition or rivalry you feel in the community with any nonprofits? Uh, there, there, there could be, Vince. I'm not, I'm not really aware of anybody who's, you know, uh, I would think indirectly because of trying to go after the same funds, possibly. Um, but I, I think in the community, I think uh, over, over time I've seen a lot of organizations working together. Um, so, I mean, I think we, we've worked together, and I, I don't really know. There could be, there could be competitions, that, uh, but I'm not really aware of them. I am. Hi, Vince. Uh, hi, Vince. Nice I'm you. sorry I haven't had a chance to get back to you, but I was in Ireland and I just got I back and I'm a little crazy. <laughs> the reason I stopped you is if you're taking a picture of the sign, it has to come down because we're rebranding and we're not in compliance with this, the national Y uh -oh. until we get that Y off there. Uh -oh. So I don't want you to use it for anything. This is the story before the real story. <laughs> yes. And I'll try to get in touch with you, but at this point, please don't use the wrong logo. Now, why don't you give me a call next week after Wednesday? Because Monday through Wednesday, I have like a whole pile of meetings and stuff. I don't know what steps it's going to take, but... Okay, sounds great. Thanks, All right, Thanks, Sharon.
It's like the steel mills used to be. Your father worked in there, your brother worked in there, you worked in there. Yeah, because the boss was <laughs> your uncle or his grandfather or something like that. But in the city, nepotism, oh yeah. The public has to believe in the system. The system is part the legislature, it's part the governor, it's part the county, it's part the courts. They gotta believe in that system. And that system of checks and balances writes the corruption problems. And it did in Johnstown. We've had those things happen right here and it's corrected the problems. More important than that, the more people that are involved in doing something positive, no matter what it is, no matter what your interest is, if you do something positive, if you continue to say, I'm proud I'm from Johnstown, and to show you that I mean it, I'm gonna go do something that's positive for Johnstown, that's what's needed. And that's what they were all willing to do in 1889 once the flood hit. Everybody did. And it wasn't acceptable just to criticize. How'd you get involved with the, uh, the people, uh, you know, with uh, Carlos and Mayor Janakovic and those guys? It isn't just the number of years you're in. It isn't just the power. It isn't just the money. All of these things add up to what becomes an incredibly difficult environment for a politician to make what I think is a fair choice for the majority of the people. Even the people that may not be able to have a, a, a loud, strong voice. How can we ever trust our local leadership. You can't. The only way to trust people is to be able to scrutinize them. I go to all these meetings and I get so much blowback and so much flack because you're asking questions. They say to me, why are you here? Why do you keep showing up? And I'm going, that's not the question you should be asking. The question you should be asking is why aren't there more people showing up to question everything you do with every cent of my tax money? And that's the problem with this area. They're complacent, they don't vote, and unless you blow something up and it's outrageous, they don't care, and they'll tell you that. I ran into an individual who's been a part of uh, Revitalize Johnstown, uh, John DeBartola, I don't know if you're familiar with John or not, but. Yeah, I'm not wild about John, because he's, if his problem is, he just wants to complain. And if you are so scared of one person sitting on a computer, posting a poster, putting up a limerick in poetic verse, or coming to your meeting saying, what are you doing? Perhaps you don't have a thick enough skin to be in politics. I don't care when I'm trashed. I actually embrace it. I was the one that went to the public meetings asking the former President Unger of the school board about his daughter's employment. He threatened to sue me multiple times at the school board meetings. It actually made front page of the paper because it was so unusual. What no one realized was we were right. The Auditor General uncovered it, and look at what happened. They have gone as far as claiming we're wasting taxpayer money filing right to know requests. Since then, some of the board members have actually apologized to me because they realized all of the right to know requests Joe and I filed 
force the school to pay their ridiculous Representative Barbin's Harrisburg law firm to fill out affidavit after affidavit proving the appearance of nepotism and the corruption in the school board. They do a lot of stall tactics and they pay an attorney from Brian Barbin's law firm in Harrisburg, 350 some dollars an hour to fight nobodies like us uh, filing right to know requests to the tune of what, $67,000 they paid him or something? Plus 30,000 administration fees. Plus $30,000 in, in hourly fees for having people make copies, they say. So the big question is, hey, if you guys come up with the numbers, like, how much is this cost to the district so far? Both indirect and direct costs. You're looking at nearly $100,000 in wow. indirect and direct costs spent on mm -hmm. right to you know. I had heard about questions regarding third party contractors at various organizations and government entities in Johnstown, just stories really from people. You don't know what's true or not true. And one of the things that I think came up in all of that was that payroll information was not something that was being made available to individuals when they would ask for it, which rose a question about that because in the state of Pennsylvania there's a right to know law and how public funds are spent is a matter of public record. That's the intent of the law. In November of 2018, I made some inquiries with the Department of Education regarding various programs that were being offered at Greater Johnstown School District. This was information that the district had already told various individuals that they didn't have, and this was related to the subcontractors working. When I talked to the Department of Education, they told me unequivocally that this was information that they had, and this was information that the district would have. Um, this was something that the fiscal clerk was providing to the Department of Education on a bi-weekly basis, and all I had to do was ask, and it was there. I think the request I filed was on December 18th. I think on December 21st, I had hundreds of pages of documents from the Department of Education. And it was the same information that was being requested of the district from these certain individuals. So the question became, why would the district spend $97,000 in taxpayer money to not give these individuals information that was public and that they had all along? And that's the interesting question, I think. I don't, I, I wanna try to stay away from personalities. I would hope that this documentary has a positive effect on youth in the Johnstown community. That's why I'm that's why I'm consenting to you to do this. I'm not consenting for a general documentary for purposes, uh, other purposes. If this is for the purpose of saying, discuss the issues that need to be discussed for the benefit of the Johnstown youth community, yes, I consent. Hi Vince, this is Jackie, Representative Brian Barber's office. Can you please give me a call back um, this, today? Brian would like to speak with you today. He'd like to, uh, if you could come into the office regarding the um, the documentary that was done. Uh, give me a call back as soon as you can at five three six nine eight one eight. Thank you. The government in Johnstown is their own worst enemy. That's exactly what they are. They're their own worst enemy. And they're not even good crooks, which I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to being crooked, but come on. People are saying you gotta be crooked to be straight. That's Johnstown. It's unfortunate. And the only thing we get is new bridges and new sewages that we have to pay for. How do you feel about some of the issues with revenue, tax revenue, currently? So it seems like there's a little bit of an underfunding. Underfunding? I don't think so, no. If you see what some people pay for taxes in this town and everything's retaxed, and the same is with senior citizens, having to pay a school tax and they don't even have a child in school. I don't say cut it out, I say cut it in half. People will pay for services they think are given to them fairly. It's, I think it's the inability of citizens to understand what taxes pay for. You know, and that whole confusion between, I can't afford taxes any longer. Well, what can you afford? I mean, policing, public works, fire, 
that's essentially the same business it was 60 years ago. You know, I carry around a cell phone that didn't exist 50 years ago. I watch television, right? Doesn't exist the same way 50 years ago. And yet I gladly pay those multi-hundred dollar bills every month for new technology. And I kind of disparage the old technology of keeping me safe, keeping me clean and healthy, and keeping my municipality in a good situation. To argue that the tax bill is somehow punitive and somehow not beneficial to citizens doesn't work. What is punitive is the inequities of the system that provides for unequal distribution of services at different cost levels. Yeah, I think that's an inequitable. Everyone agrees we need clean and safe and secure municipalities. There's a cost to that. How we deliver it, that's a political argument. How you deliver it, how you empower local governments to do it, that's a political argument. I don't see it happening anytime soon in the state legislature, though. So sometimes it's a strong network of people at the meso layer, as much as the leaders of thinking through how we're going to connect drug abuse issues with poverty programs, with education, with mental health issues, and the judicial system. And then you have this whole other layer of politics and how transparent government is. There's histories of graft and promises and distrust, and there have certainly been histories of that in Johnstown that can make people feel cynical about, you know, we're all trying to do this in good faith, and yet it's still going to go to somebody's cousin or uncle or, or some promise that was made behind a door with a handshake. It's time for a shakeup in the Redevelopment Authority. There are many out there that are not happy with the way this agency operates or is run. So I would ask you, let's make a change. Let's bring a change to that, and let's do it in a way that the city takes the lead in saying, we will no longer stand for corruption, mismanagement, or anything that may affect this agency to the detriment of Johnstown, and that we are going to make sure that we will have the people and the resources necessary in place to make sure that the Redevelopment Authority does the job that it is supposed to do. And if that means replacing people, so be it. Uh, Ron Repack, he gets a federal sentence of three years, or three and a half years, for doing what he did. Federal time is two for one. If you're a good boy, you get two days for every day that you're good. So if, if you get a year sentence, or I get a year sentence, we do six months, maybe. Three and a half years, people go, oh my god. Okay, hey, hi, thanks for coming today. And I want to get this um, press conference started. How do you feel holding an event like this is going to impact your relationship with them? Um, well, my relationship with them is not good. Um, we, you know, I, 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 quite frankly, Dave, I don't care because, I mean, um, I've been on public company boards. They don't listen. a serious problem here with our former director being convicted and they want to pretend like nothing happened. If we're going to move this city forward, we have to present an, a progressive approach in getting things done and how we govern our authorities and how we govern our government. And, you know, <laughs> federal trials do not help your image. How do you yes, plan on making changes without the cooperation of the board? I'm, I'm using the power of the, the, the bully pulpit, the public. We fight through fire and pain and always get up again. Board will probably change over time. I don't appoint people, but I suspect it will. 
I think that that challenge is very real, you know. So you've got folks that are on a sort of dependency track. They've got access to different programs that are supporting their, their lifestyle as it is. What, what's the motivation uh, between a sort of entry level position and that to lift yourself up out of that cycle? We need to create employment opportunities that are more meaningful than that. I don't blame the folks that are stuck on that cycle. We're from an industrial town that was counting on that as its, as its future. When the industry pulled up, we should have, as a society, known that, okay, we have to retool now. Oh, that can be fixed, but not overnight. Now, it's, it's one of those where now we have to bite the bullet and say, you know, this isn't going to be fixed tomorrow. But that's not us. That's not our uh, society. To make a big city innovation, there has to be a catalyst. So who's that catalyst going to be? There was in the past Obama administration funding for promised neighborhoods. That funding has continued through the current legislation so far. Promised neighborhoods receive a substantial amount of money from the federal government to incentivize the idea of a community coming together across all these different sectors to think about change. There's also really powerful foundations in this country who have looked at the gridlock of what's happening in the government and said, we're going to take charge of, of change efforts. There's progressive foundations, there's very conservative foundations who are putting a lot of money into education in cities. It's the educational portion. They know how this educational system works, how to use this as a tool. So now you implement it in each school and make it click with those five schools. Once it clicks with those five schools, then we open it up to next five and, and so on. What's neat about this is once you expose the kids to it, now you got them. You can have the conversation anywhere. If I have any enthusiasm or whatever, or passion about it, I'm trying to use that because I think the kids get it. The adults are the pain in the butt. Okay. Across the board, the kids get it. K-12 and our higher education system here has the biggest opportunity to change the, the longer tail of this whole conversation. You know, preparing kids for STEM education, making better teachers that know how to embed technology and problem solving and design thinking into their education is important. At the same time, you know, teaching the trades is important. There are a ton of people that are retiring that are skilled craftsmen or craftspeople, and we're not replacing them at the rate that we need to. And that's a huge opportunity as well. You want to carry them? Yeah. You have yourself a promising rap career? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I could do it. I'm a born star, man. I was born a star. 21 years of this thing. Not a day off, really, from basketball and football. Once football over, I go back and I go right into basketball. Once basketball go in, I rest for about maybe a month or two, I'm back into football. So, I, I mean, going through that's a lot. I don't want to put my time to nothing but my wife. And that's it. I mean, my time, she deserve it. And, uh, what if the opportunity came up? No. I don't think I'll do it again because I, I, I'm pretty much done. I'm pretty much done. I'm burnt out. If I come on to help coach from part time type of thing, I don't even think I would want to do that. I wouldn't. I would as far have. As Johnstown, but as far as not even Johnstown. If I go to Georgia or New Jersey, I don't think I'll do it there. Behind the simple fact, it's putting myself back out there, and I don't want to do that again. And my wife don't want me to do it again because I know everything's going to have to go through her first. So what happens in this summer, 2016? Oh, well, I'm, I'm doing um, until I leave. I love you with all my heart. And um, speedy speedy uh, to get there this summer. My, um, I can't wait to get down there. Nice happy, happy New Year anyway. Say it till you go say it till you go to sleep, skinny neck. Happy New Year, skinny neck. <laughs> to me, I'm very passionate that if we don't involve youth as decision makers in these processes, then we're we're never gonna get where we need to. I've done a lot of research around ways that young people can be involved, not just the recipient of support, but they actually, if you put young people at the table, 
in these decision-making processes. They're very articulate about their experiences. They'll call out issues of equity and injustice and just misinformation that adults are less comfortable talking about. And it's also a great proving ground of training young people to be change makers. Um, so it helps to build, again, the capacity of the next generation of Johnstown leaders to be thinking about how they can do this better. Yeah, they basically just have to go to Cambria County. Maybe I'll get scared and drop the charges or, you know, not drop the appeal and everything and just plead guilty. And I wasn't doing it. I was standing up for my children, plus I'm standing up for other kids. I have children that come here all the time, my son's friends. So it's not just I'm sticking up for my two boys, I'm sticking up for them as well. I'm an alumni of Johnstown. It's basically, it's repeating history. And the last person that actually went off on the school board was my mother. And that was over 21 years ago and my brother was thrown down the steps at the middle school. I got expelled from the middle school, had nothing but problems, and I wasn't having history repeat itself. I was stopping it. Something has to change if nothing has changed in the last 20 years. That's decades of, of torture that these kids are going through. So someone has to stand up to them. I actually started on Facebook, it was actually a private event. And then I decided we need to get this out there, we need to have more people show up. So we, we remade the event and made it public and it's been going all over Facebook. You can tell a lot of people have showed up today. I can't bear to are we What are we doing? What about? It was going to happen last year, but uh, the principals found out and uh, we were not confident enough, but this year the bullying just got worse. This was happening uh, for years since I was in sixth grade. Well, it's actually last year we were kind of shut down because when it first came out, I made it public. I was announcing, hey, we're going to do a protest and everything, and the school found out, so we could not do it. But now we realize that we don't care if this happens. We're, we're sticking up for ourselves, so this is what we're going to do. There's actually a couple of teachers who are against this, but a lot of them were really supportive of it. So I think they'll actually be pretty proud. So they just basically took that off of Facebook. Yeah. Because yeah. even even with the school, I am registered as Bradco, not Cast Bradco. So I mean, basically, the uh, school solicitor just made up a bunch of. Legal mumbo jumbo and threw my name on it. Oh my God.
people are busy. People are at work. Um, people are raising their kids. They aren't going to be paying attention at all times. Um, you need people to ask questions, uh, people to go to meetings, um, people to help inform the rest of the public as to what's going on. Because I think you'll find at times that the people in positions of political power aren't necessarily always forthcoming in terms of what they want to discuss openly. There are plenty of examples of that, and that's why the right to know law is so important. And I think it's also important to realize that as media or news, we don't have any sort of uh, special privilege in terms of what we're getting access to. Anybody can obtain this information, anybody who wants to be an activist, anybody who wants to be informed. And they have that right, and I think it's important that they exercise that right. People in Johnstown, the older people, they're retired. They have blinders on. They want to have blinders on. They feel helpless. There's nothing they can do, so they just ignore it. And they talk to Margie and Maggie, and they say, Maggie, oh, damn. And Maggie says, oh, let's play cards. Forget about it. But uh, I'm not a card player, and I'm not forgetting about it. And they're not stealing any more of my money. Is this important for every community, you think, to have a, a watchdog environment? I think every community mostly does, except for Johnstown and some of the surrounding areas. If we actually had five more of me who went to meetings and said, what are you doing? It would be harder to get elected. But remember, nobody votes in this community. When I ran for mayor last year, it was like a 5% of the town voted. knowing that I may not be the best applicant, but I'm hoping that others will follow my lead and apply for this position. And if you need any information on my references or my ability to work this position, I would ask you contact the references listed. They would know best my intent and ability to move this city forward. The general overlay everyone needs to realize is appearance of activity does not equal progress. So just because we had an event and people came to it doesn't mean anything happened. Uh, we need to think about what are the outcomes that we're really seeking, and then any activities that we're doing have to lead to those outcomes. Otherwise, we shouldn't be doing them. And this, this goes for all organizations, but you know, in particularly with regard to economic development, uh, we need to think about creating outcomes and having progress because those are the real measures of the impact of the activities that we do. You know, fighting to get theirs to be first and it's gonna be a political craziness going on behind the scenes. Um, that's just the nature of the beast, but you can no longer sit back and do nothing anymore in the many of these cities. We wanna see them salvaged um, and it's sad, it actually is kinda of sad that, you know, one of the ideas that we have to utilize is okay, let's, let's allow them to decline, but manage that decline as smart as we can. It's, it's actually a sad thing, you know, and that's not what we want, but it's, it's out of necessity in some cases. We've got our, our one avenue, really, to bring in a lot of folks from outside, the group that does come in to be educated. It comes to UPJ or it comes, to, you know, folks that do come in from the broader region in the Penn Highlands and stuff like that and maybe have a little bit fresher perspective or at least they've seen some other things out, outside of this area. But there are some other entities. There are a handful of other younger companies. There are folks that, that were educated elsewhere or grew up elsewhere. They are the ones that are making impact. They're, they're bringing new and different things. The establishment is stale at this point. So the answer becomes one of how well are these organizations working together in terms of saying, here's what we want our future to look like. I don't like to call him Eddie, it's Coach Taylor to me. 
But um, yeah, I think he does a fine job with those youngsters out there. He does a good job. And uh, it's about that time of the year when he'll be coming in here to sit down with me and talk about um, the upcoming, his upcoming plans, and we'll deal with um, what we can and, and um, deal with the kids that are in our communities out there, and hopefully everything will go well. But um, I've had um, absolutely um, good experiences in working with um, Coach Taylor on these things. He takes the bull by the horn, and he runs with it. And um, things have worked out. I haven't had any complaints from anyone. To me, it, it appears that everything's going well. I think I overdid myself. I was a coach. I was a general manager. I was the treasurer. Those hats I don't want to wear. As far as the kids, you know, my heart, my soul go out to these guys. And I pray every night about me and my wife's situation, that it's going to get a little better than what it is. Her degree here in Johnstown, she's using it to try to further that down there. And her degree with the field that she's in is pretty much making 16 to $17 an hour, maybe $18 an hour down there. You know what I mean? Or what she's doing. So She just didn't find the opportunity up here. Though. Hell no, it wasn't here. It wasn't here at all. I mean, I love it here. I would like to stay here. But I got to go wherever she's, you know, wherever she's happy at. You know what I mean? You know, a happy wife is a happy life. You know, I've been with my wife for 22 years, man. I just want to leave everybody with something positive. You know what I mean? This way it should be. But I'm like, it mean a lot here. That's some spiritual shit. Right here. Yeah, what's the black word called? Oh, man. Eight, seven, Yo, five. Six, five, four, eighty-nine. Happy New Year. Love you, sweetheart. Go to space, dog. I just heard a cannon go off. I probably was with my next door neighbor. That was be better. We are home cyber schooling them. So they do it from here on online, and they also have a drop-in center downtown that they can go to. Without all the bullying? Without the problems. We had teachers that we liked. And they were really good. So it's not, not an issue with teachers, but that there are some that are not. The good teachers we had, if all those teachers were there because they were good, the school wouldn't have the problems they have. Administrators, teachers, the whole, the whole lot. Money, greed, power. That's what it is. Do they know they're doing this, you think? Um, I think they do. I don't think they care. I think they know they are because I think they have to know because to get in, they have to play this game. I like to joke about political marriages. I think a lot of these people, like they'll, they'll meet um, and they get involved in a relationship and then they back each other, hell or high water, until things go one way or another and they stay together in these pairings for, my God, years. So maybe it is, in a sense, a love story, but it's not a good love story. There's no happy ending. There's no romance or wedding at the end. Our town's dying. We have too many drugs, too much crime, no solutions. Our current round of leadership wants us to pray. No bills, no laws, no ordinances. I, I live in this house. I've been here 13 years. This is my home. I love my house, uh, and I'm very grateful for it, but I don't want to be here forever. There's nothing in this town. The town's dead. There's no work. There's no people. And unfortunately, unless you're in government and connected, there's no opportunities. Always when there's an emergency, people rise up. But when you're in the, just in the day-to-day -day trenches, it's harder to get people to respond. Prevention is the best medicine, but it's always harder to get people involved in prevention than it is to get people involved on the opposite side. That's what Johnstown has that theory. Well, our city been running like this for years. We ain't have no problem. But you are having problems, but it haven't reached the surface. The world's moving fast. My thing is this. Now, I came from a fast-paced city. Now, I'm older. I want to slow down. I want to catch up on some of the things I missed. And this gives you the time for it.
Mr. Arcario? No. Are you sure? Yeah, who are you? I'm Vince Grassi. I'm with the documentary. Who? Vince Grassi. No. I'm, I'm with the documentary. I, I just came to stop by to see how the voter turnout is. The voter turnout is, so don't take my picture. Don't take my picture. Are you sure? I, I just wanted to get I said, some information. Don't take what? I just wanted to no. get some information. I don't know. I'm not at the point. Don't take my picture. I'll sue you. For what? I don't want my picture. I'm not picture. taking your picture. Don't take my picture. Are you Mr. Arturio, though? No. I'm telling you. Is there anybody inside that would have information? Is there anybody inside? Hello? Doors unlocked. Hi, I'm here with a documentary. I'm trying to cover the voter turnout for Johnstown. Is, is there voting going on here? Okay. I'm not familiar with this area. I don't live this, you know, in here. Okay. So I, I can't tell are, you. Are you the owner of this place? No, oh, no. Oh. No. <laughs> Do you know who the owner is? Oh, well, that's a club. Oh. That's, it, it's, it's kind like of like a board like of directors. <laughs> Oh, Union Social Club. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. That's no, not this a definitely is not a voting place. <laughs> what, what goes on here? That see, I'm making a documentary, and I just thought I'd stop around. This to, is a private club. That's all I can tell you. Okay, is it like. The, that's it. That's all. I can tell you. I mean, can I join it? No. Are you sure? Absolutely. <laughs> Positively. Why, why, why the secrecy? Membership? No secrecy. Memberships gets closed. I have nothing to do with it, but I, I know that I can't have anybody to join because the membership's closed. Okay. All right. And I'm not in charge. Okay. Was that man who just left, was he in charge? He probably knows more about the club than I do. And its activities, yeah. Uh, who was that? Bill. Bill. Yeah, Bill Stringent. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, I just thought I'd stop by. He seemed like, you know, he was in a hurry to get going. So. Well, he's probably going to a bank or something. <laughs> okay, I got to go to the phone. Well, I wouldn't you. want to miss anything then. <laughs> okay. See ya. Okay, see ya.